There have always been couples that have difficulty having children, or maybe they waited too long or even just can't have any. Some of them adopt, some of them get pets, some of them just live alone. Yet, I bet none of the ones you know have had a baby tree stump come to life. Well, get ready for Greedy Guts, also known as Little Otik. I can't wait to tell you about this one. While I may give you my opinion on the film here, that's no substitute for experiencing it yourself. Links to the movie are in the description as well. I will also say that this film has some pretty pretty big mature themes that some might find disturbing, so I just approach with caution. What? This goes on for another whole minute, by the way. Next, we have Carol, who is in an OBGYN office. When he looks down at the street, I think they're packaging babies for sale like a deli. Okay, we'll just assume this is a common occurrence here. As Carol and Bazina head back home, their neighbor's girl runs out into the street, which prompts Carol to slam on the brakes. As they exit the car, Bazina gives the girl a loving greeting, then cries as she leaves. Why? What is this? Of course, this girl talks to her family about Bozina not having a baby. This whole world seems to be obsessed with having babies. But when she goes downstairs afterwards, an old man ogles her and a hand comes out of his pants. I kid you not, that's exactly how it plays out. Naturally, the neighbors defend the old man, but we know what we saw. Just to add to the idea that this world is obsessed with babies… Couldn't make this up if I tried. How he even cut the watermelon without cutting the baby is beyond me. Is it imagery? Is it a weird alternate universe where babies are popping out of the ground? Oh yeah, this movie just keeps adding it on, but I can't stop watching. It also has a weird focus on the food. At least they didn't zoom in on someone chewing this time. The next day, Carol and his neighbor work on clearing out the yard while Bazina depressingly packs away the baby clothes she had hoped to have a need for. Meanwhile, outside, Carol rips up this mandrake looking tree stump and has an epiphany. Nothing is surprising me anymore, and we're only 12 minutes into the story. Carol takes the stump into his workhouse shed, and it's assumed that he stays out there and works on his project for some time. When he appears to Bazina later, he comes with a gift. You said it, kitty. If that doesn't disturb you, nothing will. Of course, Bazina envisions a baby and she immediately takes to caring for the baby like a crazed mother. She lays it on a blanket, drags the case with baby clothes out, and dresses it up in a diaper, bonnet, and some clothes. How she got the clothes on without snapping a twig, I'll never know. That's skill. Carol begins to realize that while he had good intentions, he might have gone about helping her cope the completely wrong way. Later that night, they get ready to leave the property, and when she walks out with the baby, Carol loses his mind. He tries to convince her that it's just a piece of wood, but once he realizes that she isn't going to understand, he strikes a deal to leave the baby at the house while they're gone. If you're not getting the point across after doing this, nothing is gonna work. Of course, the next time they see their neighbors, Bozina has told them that they're having a baby. How is he handling all of this? Of course, he goes to his liquor cabinet right after, but that still can't be enough. Bozina shows Carol her plan for faking the pregnancy. She has a pillow for every month of pregnancy. Not a bad plan, honestly, but still messed up. Again, why the fascination of close-ups of eating? The imagery and sounds is enough to make this a horror movie for sure. As the neighbor's daughter sneaks around, she notices Bazina reading a story to the tree stump baby. Of course, this puts Bazina's plan of faking pregnancy at risk, so at least now we understand the daughter's purpose. Again, we run into the creepy old man who causes the neighbor's daughter to run downstairs and bump into Bazina's fake belly. She's definitely more more suspicious now. I feel like he's just part of the story to push other people into the next thing. Cause and effect. Next thing you know, Bazina is going into labor. As much as this is a fake pregnancy, she sure is hitting those screams just right. As he drives her to the hospital, she's still acting as though she's in labor, which would drive me crazy. Once they make it to their cabin, she frantically makes her way to the tree stump baby. As she holds the stump, Carol tries to remind her to hide, considering she's supposed to be in the hospital. Once Carol makes it back to their apartment, the neighbors pull him in to talk about the labor and to celebrate. 
Jinky. This little girl is the Nancy Drew of Europe, if ever there was one. Between her walking him through his hospital phone call and checking the phone after, she's on top of it. The girl comes out to the room with everyone else and asks Carol what he'll name the baby. As he takes a second, he decides to name it Otik. Hey, a reference to the title, finally! Now, if you thought anything was weird up until now, then just get ready for things to get even more crazy. I warned you, things take a turn from here on. Naturally, Carol comes at them with an axe and I can't blame him. Look at it. Every time they show it, it gets a little more unsettling. Make it stop. After they try to raise Otik like a normal baby, he starts to show that he's constantly hungry. Soon, Carol mentions that this cannot end well and Otik's hunger makes him a little unpredictable. <laughs> I think it's time to plant that thing out in the yard where he dug it up to begin with. The animation makes it even worse. <laughs> what is it? The next day, Bazina goes to the store and leaves Odic in his carriage outside. Outside? Who leaves a baby outside? And who else would pop up at this opportune time than the neighbor's daughter? She makes her way over to Otik's carriage and removes his sock. That has to be the calmest reaction I ever could have imagined for finding a live tree baby. When the daughter makes her way home, she opens up her fairy tale book and finds a story called Otesenek. It's a story of a man and woman who wanted a baby. The man dug up a stump that looked like a baby and he trimmed it to look more like one still. Oh, you get the story. We've literally been watching it this whole time. The point is that eventually, Otesenek grew so much that he continued to eat everything and everyone. Of course, neither the story or the real thing explain how it comes to life in the first place. I feel like that should be in the fairy tale as a warning how not to let this happen. Okay, first of all, why are we so close to the pot of soup again? Second, again, that's the calmest reaction to something that should not be considered normal. Third, what? This whole movie is like a bad trip. When Bozina goes to check on little Otik, he's not so little anymore. Like no one saw this coming. You mean to tell me that you knew what you had this whole time? Okay, you've got what's coming to you. When you know you have a little monster, you don't just push that information aside. On a side note, where can I get one of these? And what? The more Otik grows, the more the couple have to buy to keep him fed. But one day, they notice that the door has been left open. When they go in to investigate, they notice Otik has eaten a human body. Poor mailman. The next day, a new mailman is sent in the old one's stead, and this just furthers the neighbor's daughter's suspicions. At this point, she knows what the couple is housing. Later, Bazina leaves Otik and his carriage outside again. How hard is it just to bring the carriage with you? Well, one of the neighbors snoops in the carriage to find out that Bazina only left a plastic baby doll in it. The way these neighbors keep acting, I'd probably just let Otik eat them at this point. I don't know, stop zooming in on people eating. The neighbor that discovered the plastic doll goes to the police and asks them to investigate the couple. She believes that they're hiding a crime concerning their baby and that this fake is their way of maintaining cover. Soon after, after someone calls Bazina's OBGYN, who explains to the caller that there's absolutely no way she could have had a baby because both her and Carol were sterile. I'm just gonna assume that patient doctor confidentiality doesn't exist here because he didn't even ask who it was. He just spilled the private beans at the drop of a hat. Sure enough, a social worker shows up at Bazina's door asking to see Odic. Well, if you weren't a suspect of a crime before, you sure are now. She didn't give a single damn about that poor woman's foot. I'm not sure what's funny. Brazina slamming the social worker's foot in the door or Brazina thinking she's a match for the European Terminator of a social worker. As the social worker barges in, she notices the state of the apartment and the plethora of food Brazina has prepared for Otik. Then she hears Otik in the room next to them. Again, credit for trying, but really? You really think you had a chance. The social worker barges into Otik's room to find twigs and branches all over the bed before... I think things have gotten a little bit out of hand. Carol makes his way home with sacks of meat for Odic. I personally don't think Odic is hungry at the moment. 
Carol prepares to take care of Odig while Bazina pleads with him one last time, but Carol has had enough of the death and pretending. He goes into Otik's room and ties some rope around Otik's legs. As Odig wakes up and struggles, Carol tussles with him and restrains his mouth as best he can. You know, duct tape, which is the solution to everything. If this poor girl grows up to lead a normal life, I'd be surprised. So apparently, Carol's big plan is to starve Odik to death, which feels infinitely more cruel than chopping him up into firewood, and surely not a foolproof plan for a creature that eats everything. He'll get out soon. Why, why, why? We don't care what you're eating. We want to know who Otik eats next. And here, Nancy Drew goes down into the apartment basement to find Otik. Oh, sorry, not just to find him, set him free. This whole community is hopeless. No survival instincts whatsoever. The girl proceeds to untie Otik, who then pulls her in closer before she says that she wants to help Otik. She goes back up to her apartment where she gathers food and toys before she travels back down to the basement. In her fairy tale story, an old woman and her hoe are what does the Otesanek in, so the daughter grabs the hoe from the old woman in the complex and goes back to Otik. Soon after, people come to Carol and Bazina's apartment to question them about things. Bazina welcomes the police into their apartment as they question them about the disappearance of the social worker. Just as they're ready to leave, the police police officer notices a fake baby doll in the crib. He decides to ask about the mailman as well. As they leave, you can tell that they don't buy their story. As a daughter arrives at the apartment complex, she notices that the old lady has bought another hoe. When she goes to take it again, the old lady is ready for her. It's now that we find out that the girl stole the first one so the old lady couldn't kill Otik. She makes her promise not to hit Otik before giving her hoe back. When the girl is denied extra food to take down to Otik, she draws straws to decide who she is gonna feed to Otik. Sure enough, it's the creepy man who just happens to come around the corner. Can't say that one was too sad, but we know how this kind of story goes. I'm becoming so numb to this movie's antics that it's scaring me. After Carol has a personal reflective moment of all the damage Odik has caused, he goes to his neighbor to ask for his chainsaw. He marches down to the basement just as the neighbor's daughter has decided to sacrifice him next. As he approaches Odik with the chainsaw, he sees what Odik has become. I can't even say that's cute, but somehow it makes Carol weak and call him son. Somehow, Bazina senses this and heads down to the basement as well. A quick scream follows and the daughter brings her father's chainsaw back up to her father. Suddenly, the old lady believes the girl speaking about a Tessanek. She reads the fairy tale about it, but in the meantime, Otik is getting hungrier. Well, time to cut your losses. Otik starts eating all of the cabbages in the garden outside and this prompts the old lady to take care of Otik. She grabs her hoe and makes her way to the basement. And it's done. Literally, the movie just stops with her walking down the stairs and the little girl crying. Considering the rest of the film, I think I'd rather have seen this old woman dispose of Odic on screen. But the film kept me entertained and genuinely confused for a good bit of it. So I guess we can call this a win either way. I hope you enjoyed the video and by all means, watch the film for yourself. If you did like it, leave a like on the video and suggest what I should watch next. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one and I'll see you in the next video.